In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we prepare to offer Almighty God divine worship, and to hear God's word in Scripture, let us pause and examine our lives through the ways in which we have sinned, and ask the Lord's forgiveness and strength. For the times in our life in which we have closed our minds to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, Lord have mercy. For the times in our life in which we have closed our hearts to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, Christ have mercy. For the times in our life in which we have failed to share the gifts of the Holy Spirit with others, especially those in need, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wondrous way, grant, we pray, that with proud devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebration to come. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In reading from the book of Joshua, the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you, while the Israelites were encamped at Gilgal on the plain of Jericho. They celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land and the form of unleavened cakes and parched bread. <clears throat> on that day after the Passover, on which the ate of the promise of the Lamb, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Responsorial song, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The Lord will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together exalt his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor call out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved them. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. <coughs> Second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come, and all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ, and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, 
as if God were aiding to us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I will get up and go to my Father, and shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons. And the younger son said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine, struck the country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have much more than enough food to eat? And here I am, dying from hunger. I shall get up, go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I no longer deserve to be your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up, went back to his father, while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him, who was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fatted calf and slaughter it. <clears throat> then let us celebrate with a feast, because the son of mine was dead and has now come back to life. He was lost and is now found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son, who had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fatted calf because he has him back, safe and sound. He became angry and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said, to his father and replied, all these years I have served you, and not once did I disobey your orders, but you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fatted calf. He said to him, My son, you have been here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, 
because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, this is uh, one of the most famous and beloved of Jesus' parables. The parable of the prodigal son. Of it now transformed it into the parable of the forgiving father. They both go together. So, take your picture. Um, Van Gogh painted one of the more famous paintings of the father embracing the son. Uh, and I'd like to Ask us to consider for a moment, please, please, uh, this parable, peculiar to the Gospel of St. Luke. It's not found in any other Gospel, particularly to him. Uh, it, uh, it begins with, once again, the traditional complaint that Jesus associates uh, with the, uh, the wrong people. Uh, tax collectors and sinners. My God, I can't associate with that. Oh my God. Yet Jesus says, I am, I am the good physician. Turn that thing off, please. My God. Some people think that they have to come with a cell phone to church, but they can't get in. You can get in without a cell phone. In fact, I would welcome you in without a cell phone. So turn the thing off. You know, uh, Father Lincoln will be here later. You can go complain and carry on and say that I scolded and everything else. I don't care. I'm tired of this stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm two minutes into a sermon that I'm supposed to de deliver. And this goes off. I mean, you got to be kidding. I, I'm, I'm tired of this. Anyway, uh, with the uh, tax collectors and the sinners, and uh, they say, you know, he does that. And Jesus tells them the parable, the parable of the prodigal son. And it begins strangely begin strangely. Father, give me my share of the estate that is coming to me. The father hasn't died. The father hasn't died. He wants his inheritance before the father has passed away. Now, maybe you've had that experience. I, I can't imagine it, frankly. To come ask me, Ask me, give me my inheritance. And I haven't croaked yet. I mean, what's going on here? But notice the father doesn't get into it. The father divides the property. He gets all of his belongings together because you see, the younger son has cut off relationship with the father. To cut off relationship with him. To cut off relationship with him. And then he goes to a distant country. The distant country is not simply geographical. It's also relational and spiritual. He's left the father what he's done. He's left his father. And uh, he spends everything. He's a spend, he's a spend thrift. A, a, a spend freak, rather. He just spends everything. 
And he has to come to the point where he has no resources. He has none. He's so destitute that he has to hire himself out uh, to one of the local citizens. And now, 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 now wrap your head around this one. Okay. He's put in charge of the swine, the pigs. He's a Jew. And he's put in charge of the pigs. Uh, that's an incredible, that's an incredible insult and something that would be very repulsive and repugnant uh, to an observant Jew, to fool with the pigs, with the pork, and all that sort of stuff. But they are actually eating better than he is. And St. Luke, Jesus, says uh, he came to his senses. He came to his senses. What does that mean? God's grace came into his heart. Because sometimes, you see, we have to be brought so low before we can come to our senses. Because so many people think on their own, by their own intelligence, by their own resources, their own ability, they'll make it. No, you won't. No, you will not make it. It's when you come to your senses in God, that's when you begin to move forward and to be lifted up. And he says, uh, I'll go to my father's house and say that I've sinned against heaven, against you, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as you would one of your hired workers. So he went up and got back to his father. Now we can imagine the father, his son, that left. Give me half the stuff. Give me my inheritance. And the son is no longer there, the younger son. And so he returns to the father. Uh, you don't have to go to Bible school for that, right? We return to the Father. This is Lent. It's returning to Almighty God, the Father. His Father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. And the Son doesn't get an opportunity to say all of the speech that he prepared to say. The father doesn't want to hear it. He catches sight of him and is filled with compassion. That's Almighty God. Mercy and compassion. The hammer that cracks the hard heart, that cracks sin, is that of mercy and compassion. That's, that's what it is. And he says, you know, bring the finest robe, get a ring, get sandals, kill the fatted calf, all this kind of stuff. And the celebration begins. This is what happens when the sun returns. There is a celebration. For those who return to the church, the church of Jesus Christ, there's a tremendous celebration. But 
The question I have for you this morning is this. Who is the prodigal son? You say, well, well that's stupid. Uh, that's obvious. The son who left. I would suggest to you that that's the wrong answer. I would like to you to consider a different answer. Yeah. It's the one who stayed home. It's that's the prodigal son. The one who stayed home. All these years, he says, and this is a bad translation, by the way. The older translation from the Greek and Hebrew, much better. All these years I have slaved for you. He doesn't see himself as a son. He sees himself as a slave. He's nothing more than a, a, a he's even less than a hired worker. All these years I have, and I'm going to use the old one, I have slaved for you. I didn't disobey any of your orders, yet you ne never gave me a goat to feast on with my friends. This son has kept the books. He's kept the record. You didn't do anything for me. You didn't give me anything for me or for my friends. I've been a slave for you. And now this one comes back and look what's going on. The prodigal son is not the son who left. It's really the son who stayed. <clears throat> because in many ways, he never really saw himself as a son. He saw himself as a dutiful slave doing what God, in this case his father, wanted him to be done. Many of us have children in our family, grandchildren. They leave. They leave, they go off for various reasons. Do we go from the porch and embrace them and welcome them back? Or do we? I told you so. I knew this was going to end bad. No good. I told you. But do we do what this father did in the parable? Because you see, at the end of the day, a forgiving father is really a forgiving God. He touches our hearts with his mercy. God, he doesn't, he doesn't wait for the son to even get up to the porch. He rushes from the porch to embrace the son. And he doesn't even listen to all of his prepared speech that's not even going to take place. Because the father doesn't want to hear it. Because the father's compassion is greater than the son's contrition. Get the ring, get the robe, get the sandals, kill the fatted calf. Let's celebrate. Why? Because the lost has been found and the dead has come back to life. And that's the life of every sinner. All of us.
even these wonderful people here, you don't think they are. They are. All, 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 all of us, uh, we're all sinners. From the Pope to the streetwalker. And God says, come back, come back. And what better than in the sacred time of life on the way to Easter? Come back to the church. Come back and repent and reform your life. And let the almighty mercy of God shining up there on that cross, the beautiful cross, um, that's uh, that's an incredible uh, that's an incredible display by Almighty God for God's love for us. We're all to some extent. I don't, I don't, care, I don't care who you are. We're all to some extent prodigals. We all, at one point or another, wandered off the reservation meaning the church. But we don't have to stay away. We don't have to keep away. Because God, through grace, keeps inviting us back. And maybe you know people who have been away from the church. I'm going to end on this, so just bear with me a minute. Um, I'm going to, uh, you, you probably know people who may be away from the church, who are struggling with their faith. Good people, not bad people, good people. And they're struggling with their faith. And they're struggling with the church. And they've been away for a while. What a tremendous gift you could give them. you invited them back, not scolded them, not lectured them, not a finger in the eyeball, but invited them back, especially as we continue through Lent into Easter. What a tremendous gift you would give them. For this is the time when the dead or to come back to life, the lost, or to be found. And what a tremendous thing that God may indeed use you as his instrument to call the dead and the lost back to life and to be found in the church again. What a gift you would give. What a gift you would be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand. Let us, let us offer our great profession of faith. I believe.
religious leaders, those men and women entrusted with the special care of others, that they may bring them closer to the merciful Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our civic and government leaders, that they may be men and women outstanding in virtue, that they may work for the common good, be ever mindful of the poor, and always promote the dignity and the sacredness of all human life. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us remember this morning's uh, offering of Mass, all of our relatives and friends who are sick, in mind, body, and spirit, that they may be touched by the healing grace of Jesus, the divine physician. We pray to the Lord. Amen. And let us pray for all of our relatives and friends who have died, that they indeed may be received into the heavenly kingdom of blessed peace. And this morning we remember Helen Kuhlman. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we present all of our prayers to you. You search our hearts, you know what we need. Help us each day to truly be instruments of your grace and help us to make others move to you, especially in this holy season for your forgiveness and your acceptance. For this, we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread to offer. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine to offer. Through the divine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you in a fitting way for the salvation of all the world. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, He has <clears throat> led the human race that once walked in darkness into the radiance of faith and light, and has also brought a born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make us truly a people of God. And so our voices blend with all the choirs of archangels, angels, and saints as we say, Holy, 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 Holy. You 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts be bright, by sending down your spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks to it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and profess the resurrection until the coming of the Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Carol, the Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever endeavor. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Have a seat for a moment. A couple of announcements. Let the divine mercy perish in this mission. Featured speaker, Father Chris M. L. R. M. I. C. Director of the Association of Marian Helpers. Monday, April 8th through Wednesday, April 10th. Please consult the bulletin for more information. Supper and speaker night by Men's Club. Guest speaker, Dr. Edward Jordan, April 3rd from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please RSVP in the front office, parish office. Augustine Institute, please visit our CD and pamphlet division display. Stands in the vestibule of the church. Lots of our interesting items, both English and Spanish, available. Donations welcome. The pro-life ministry of Sacred Heart encourages parishioners to attend the movie Unplanned, the dramatic true story of a former Planned Parenthood leader's eye-opening journey across the lifeline. Abby Johnson becomes the youngest clinic director in the history of Planned Parenthood. Then, a life-changing experience turns her into an anti-abortion activist. Amen. It opens this weekend in four major theaters in the Divorce Recovery and Bereavement Support Group costs $50. Please contact Rhonda Rio to reserve your spot. Space is limited. For more information, please consult the board. Last, Lenten Seafood Dinners. It has on the bulletin March 31st, but that's not true, obviously. It's uh, April 5th. And adults six dollars per adult, four dollars per children up to fourteen years old. That's a hungry appetite there. And uh, twenty dollars per family. It'll be consist of shrimp, Cajun style salmon, sauteed veggies, fingerling potatoes, and garlic bread, plus the uh, uh, the uh, wine, water, and drinks. Please stand for the Let us pray. O God, who enlightened everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God Father, Son, and Spirit, descend upon you and remain forever. Amen. Our celebration of this Eucharist is ended and is also begun. Let us go forth now to love and serve the Lord and one another. Uh...